John 8.23 Et tikebat eis, vos de deor sum estis, ego de superni sum, vos de mundo hoc estis, ego non sum de hoc mundo. And he was saying to them, You all are from below. I am from above. You all are of this world. I am not of this world. Here we've got a couple of interesting statements that Jesus makes that give us cause to look at some intriguing words and expressions that we'll see in other places as we are reading Latin of different kinds. First, we want to mark out our quotations here as we've needed to do during this intense back and forth between Jesus and the Jewish leaders. So he was saying to them, and then we probably want to stick something like a modern semicolon in there, and then cl closing quotation marks. So he was saying to them, what was he saying to them? You are from below. That's how we translated this. So estis should cause us no problems. This is the second person plural, present active from esse, just as sum is the first person singular, present active indicative from esse. Those should be familiar forms to you if you spent some time learning the rudiments of Latin. De deorsum, though, in fact, we might say the use of de, the preposition de, throughout this verse might seem a little bit unfamiliar to you. And we've also got to talk about, and I think we should want to talk about this word, de orsum. De orsum is apparently a contraction of an earlier form, de versum or de worsum, which means literally turned downwards. But de orsum becomes a simple word meaning down, often down words, depending on the context. And it has a counterpart, sursum, probably a contraction of supersum, I imagine, originally. Anyway, sursum ac deorsum is a really common phrase in Latin. It means upwards and downwards, especially in contexts of motion. It can often also be equivalent to English to and fro, back and forth something like that, but these are words you'll encounter all the time and very often in this pairing. Uh, but this isn't exactly equivalent to supernis, even though the Greek underlying both phrases is quite parallel. So Erasmus proposed instead of de deorsum, saying ex inferis, from those below, which is closer to what the Greek says. And then corresponding to that down here, he would add the preposition X here as well. But because it occurs before a word beginning with a consonant, you can just say a, a supernis. That would preserve the parallelism of the Greek text. And I think he's right about that, that that would be sort of a more satisfying Latin translation. But nevertheless, what we have is deorsum, which is nice because it gives us an excuse to talk about deorsum and sursum. Sursum ac deorsum. Sursum et deorsum, it's a nice little phrase to encounter here. So the meaning, though, is ex inferis, from the regions or those who are below, as opposed to the regions or, or those who are above. That's the contrast that is being made here. And Erasmus is right, too. I think that ex would be a little bit more idiomatic, at least by the canons of classical Latin. But de here, even though the sense is being stretched maybe by the standard of classical usage a little bit, this is acceptable, too, to mean from in the sense of originating out of or something like that. And so then we get de mundo, hoc, you are all from this world, but I, Jesus says, am not de hoc mundo. And this is very much Jesus's way of talking, particularly in the Gospel of John, in these short, memorable, repetitive phrases that really stick in your memory. Now, before I finish up, I want to give you one enjoyable tidbit from Lewis and Short's dictionary here as an example of how sursum and deorsum could be used. And I'm giving this to you just because it's a sentence that I like. In one of Seneca's letters, we find this sentence, Omnia ista sursum 
deorsum fortuna versavit. That is, literally, fortune has turned everything topsy-turvy. That's the English translation that Lewis and Short give. And I love that because topsy-turvy uh, as an idiomatic expression in English kind of captures the folksiness of sursum deorsum used here, notice, without a conjunction, which you could do. It was such a common phrase. You could just say sursum deorsum, up and down, back and forth. All of these things, fortune has turned, again, in an English phrase, we might say topsy-turvy. So I just think that's a charming example of how this idiomatic phrase was used. And of course, there are plenty others which you'll find if you consult uh, any modern dictionary, whether it's Lewis and Short or the Oxford Latin Dictionary or whatever. Uh, it's a fun phrase to investigate.